Not at all. Greetings, 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 greetings. This is I, your king. King Cuthbert Jefferson, the sin of God, the fifth kind of man, Jew, the reincarnation of King Edgar the Peaceful. You are here. Uh, uh, we're doing a, a ministry on regards to substance abuse and recovery. Uh, I have, have here by my side uh, my brother, uh, my family member. Um, it's a testimony. We know we have a lot of uh, facilities out there today that claim to have uh, the remedy for those who suffer from these type of disorders. Um, but I'm letting you know that this facility, i.e. the English Third Temple Church, uh, has the best recovery for those suffering from these substance abuse. And what better way to have it uh, shown in concrete form than to have it displayed by those who have been through that dip those different types of endeavors. So without further ado, I have before you Willie Jefferson. He's my brother, and he's here to give you his uh, brief uh, testimony about his life, dealing with the things that we all need correction on. So with that, I digress. You got the floor. Peace, greeting under the temple. King Clifford Jefferson, Prince Willie C. Jefferson. I'm here to uh, do a testimony. Uh, those that do know me from New Brunswick, know it areas all over New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, you know, as you know, the name that I'm under, don't speak that name. My name is now, it's just Prince William Jefferson. Um, my testimony is that uh, most people have to get their, uh, they call recovery on this plane, which I call Earth, is through uh, some type of facility. Um, I'm not going to discard the facilities because uh, it sparks a beginning of a person realizing two planes, which I call two swords. You have a positive and negative one. You can choose to use which one you want once you're aware of their power. I mean, the mind is powerful, so you use your mind in a negative form, which is the negative sword. You know, you get uh, your justice, which is negative results. Justice is not a bad word. It also means one reward. If you take the, the positive sword and use it for positive things, you get positive rewards. Those are the two swords that's given by the earth, period, by man walking this land. To make the story shorter for you, it's that I had to realize that becoming a man means mentally becoming a man. Physically, it's played out from the things we see from childbirth. We see everything on TV, and you want to be a part of that, regardless of how you obtain which I would call food call. Oh, that's good. How you will obtain that and break that down to you so you understand where I'm coming from. Again, for those who's not walking the plane, I'm on to the church that I follow now, is that when you're born, you see all of these glamorous things on TV, you know, and coming from where we come from, we're kings and queens by nature. We want these things that's rightfully ours. So by any means, by any warriors, we're going to obtain them things. So without knowing the foundation of why you're doing this, you're going to get it. So again, going back to justice, the two swords you choose to use is a negative sword, which is the penalty. Your penalty would be what? Incarceration, away from your family, lack of life. You don't, you really don't even know how to become to be, start to become a, a man, period. If you're black, white, Puerto Rican, coming from the plane we come from, it's a lot of difficulties if you're not aware. Okay, okay. Before we even get into that, just tell us a little bit about your life, uh, about your coming up. Uh, I was raised in um, New Brunswick, also raised in North. But New Brunswick is my foundation, Jersey Avenue. I have five brothers, sister, family. I didn't really have to sell drugs or any of that. Like I said, I've seen that glamour. I wanted that. So, you know, I ran the streets, became a part of that. I did anything, guns, drugs. Started using drugs became my worst problem with my mind. I started using drugs more than I was selling. That right there becomes a burden to everybody that you deal with. Your family and everybody start to suffer from your problem, which is a mental problem of obsession of what? Money, drugs, whatever that is. It's an obsession now. I cannot turn it off because I don't know how to begin to turn it off. Oh, well said, well said. And we know that people suffer from the same conditions. So that being said, what are some of the things that you use at this point to be able to focus on accomplishing the goal of recovery? Because I know, as you said, when you when you first spoke about that, you don't want to uh, 
uh, put a shadow on the recovery process that is being done out there by the system that has created. But you That's took another, with that. yeah, but now, you, you took another role from that and applied it here at the English Third Temple Church by way of the sisters of your brother and his wife. But what are some of the things that stuck out uh, with this recovery versus the other recovery processes that we have done in your undertaking? All right, this is, I'm going to put it kind of short. A lot of people are going to catch this, but the system is set up this way, like a doctor would do. They're going to just tell you the symptoms that you suffer from. They're not going to tell you the long-term symptoms of using uh, drugs, cigarettes, or whatever. They're only going to deal with what you're coming there for, which is addiction problem. They ain't going to tell you how to really fix it. Just like a mechanic is not going to tell you how to fix the car because he wants you to come back to fix that car again. Okay. Shorten it. So what I did, I, I, I was wise enough to pay attention after a while. But what kind of methods they use, what kind of medication they use, and things of that nature. And I applied that with the temple, with, with natural things that we can use other than medication that they give you. They're going to try to give you a drug to keep your pain and all of that to go away. You really don't need that. Okay. And you take a step back and look at everything as a drug, right? So they're going to give you pills, make you feel better. So you take that pill and you use tea. We have teas nowadays that um, the queen gives me that would take away all anxiety, pain, all of that if you pay attention to your, how your body is really. Instead of just reacting, respond to the way your body is feeling, and then you apply what you need to make that part of your body feel better. It's always something that you, everything has a solution to it. It doesn't have to be medication. Well said, well said. Okay, that being said, uh, what are the, some of the type of uh, awareness that have come across uh, from taking a route of, of kicking the cold turkey versus, uh, as you said, through the system? What are, the, what are some of the things that you can tell the viewers uh, to look out for in regards to this type of recovery? Uh, and uh, the, uh, like, as you said, that they're a mask, but through the process that we take care of at the English Third Temple Church, uh, the the physical uh, 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 affliction that you have done to your body. Uh, what can you tell those viewers that don't or have not been subject to the type of process that you went through? What would some advice would you give them in regards to truly curing the uh, adversities that they're going through as a result of this uh, uh, situation dealing with? First of all, that 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 question that you're asking. It's like asking, uh, is God a man or a woman? But I could tell you this much, that they can be mentally arrested, like anything. You can um, want cake all day, but you don't eat the cake. Mentally, you wanted to eat it, but physically, you didn't. You didn't respond to the way you were feeling. I mean, you didn't react to the way you were feeling. You responded to the way you were feeling. You know what I mean, and say, I cannot eat that cake because it's going to make me get a little overweight. So mm -hmm. I choose not to. So you have a choice. You know what I mean? Once you really, really realize that choice, like man has free will, you have to make that choice. It took me a minute to do so. That's the core of the situation, having the, um, the ability to take the first step with your mind going to say, I can't do it. I tried it before. I can't do it. I did it five, six, seven, because you was going to a facility that's trained to make you think you can't do it. You can come back and use their pills again. Just keeping it. And those that been where I've been, I've been to Newark, Penn Station, Patterson, Trenton, Piscataway, anything in Jersey, they've seen his face. And also out of state, it doesn't matter. I'm just telling you, it's not going to work unless you truly want to stop using narcotics. That's the first thing. Now the road after that is going to be worse because your mind is going to tell you, I want to use, and you're always going to have that feeling the whole course, even when you think you're clean. Your mind going to tell you, you're good, I want to use. And that's where I had to become a man, and you're just like, I can't use today. I jump on a bus and just free my mind and look at something that I would really like to do. You know what I mean? And that keeps me focused, and also the temple keeps me focused. You got to put yourself around people that truly, truly love you. Now, the pain my family went through while I was going through this one, because I always in the facility trying to get these people to help me, and they really don't help me. They, it's fool's gold. They, it feels like they're helping you. It really does. 
until when you walk out of there and be like, what did they really do? Yeah, now you're back at square one with no books and tools. You're going back to go pick up the stuff that you used to do. The time I'm telling you this time what I did, I said I just watched. And I told my family when I came out, I can't go to one of those facilities. I'm going to die in there. Mentally, I would have died in there. So mentally, we built up our keys, reading, um, good affirmations in the morning. Um, family wake up, even if they didn't want to say how I was doing because the chaotic stuff I was going through, they would say, how was you doing? What do you need? And they would help me until I was able to do the same thing in reverse for them. And that's where the family component is the recovery. That's it. That's why they always ask you in the facilities, who can you call? Who's going to come to visit? Blah, blah. So they know that's the first part of recovery is the family. So why do you need to go to the building to get your family to come there? Foods go. You're getting paid off for our addiction. Shortening. Um, becoming a man is loving my brother, my sister, and my family, and myself enough to look at myself in the mirror with like enough is enough. I'm a king. I'm a prince. I hold a throne. I hold a title. I gotta uphold. I gotta be able to step up. Time is coming short. That's just my goal. You know what I mean? For you, it might be another way. But the first way to do that is to love yourself and find something you can hold on with strength and pull. It's called push and pull. Again, push and pull. I push you, you pull me, we push each other, we look around, get that feeling, and we pull him with us, we pull her with us, <coughs> and vice versa. That's what's called recovery process comes, and that's when we can arrest it one brick at a time. Everything has obstacles. Twist up an obstacle into a solution. A problem is not a problem. It's actually a situation. A situation has a solution. And there's this period. The word somatics they use is to keep us thinking that we always got a block on that back. But actually, we're the building blocks of the whole universe, period. You know what I mean? And the king opened my eyes to that. The queen is here to test to that. It's a spiritual thing that's being played out on earth. People just don't want to see it. You always talk about ghosts and this and that and aliens when they come on TV. But if I would have told you that, you would have said the black guy's going crazy, put some handcuffs on him. But I'm here to contest that on my addiction has been arrested to the church, the temple. I'm blessed to be here. I actually supposed to be in a plane somewhere and my soul folks have been arrested already. But I'm here physically to tell you that I am contest that you can stop using drugs if you choose to mentally first. And you need your family to do so. You don't need a facility because everything is subliminally said. 99 of communication is nonverbal. Again. Well said. 99 of communication is nonverbal. 10% of that is used to keep confusion going so we can pay attention to nothing. But take a pause in a minute and love yourself and figure it out. Well said, well said. So as you can see in the continuous videos that we have put forth, we are subject to what we call the laws of the poor, the laws of the overseer, but the overseer is not doing their job. So we give credit to them, but we know that in order for us to heal our people, we must heal ourselves and heal ourselves with our knowledge. And we thank you for all those who are viewing this podcast. We give honor for the recovery for Mr. William Jefferson, the senator of Godfrey the Fifth County Grand Jew. As I'd like to said, give a uh, shout out to the guys down in Penn Station, North New Jersey, Billy Boys, what's going on. Those that's in the recovery process that have been through what I've been through, that's struggling with the addiction process as possible. I'm coming through there this week um, to come see some people down there. So if y'all see me through my walk and my journey, God's going to lead me through that way. I'll uh, probably be visible. Y'all know where I used to be. Those that know where I used to be, I'm going to skip through there real quick and handle my business and keep it moving. God bless. Well said, well said. And with that, we give honor to the queen for once again, she was the foundation for my resurrection and she's also yeah, the, like the resurrection for her. Lisa. She knows she is. She was definitely 90% of my recovery process dealing with the herbs and the teas. If you uh, get in touch with the church, um, I'm quite sure she would be delighted to uh, help you out with that. I mean, with any type of pain you have, she has a natural remedy for that. And you can sit there and watch it whip it up and you'd be like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> she's the queen. Well, uh, so I'm telling you, I've been to 101 facilities. 
I can count them on my hand. People in recovery know me by name and it never worked. This one right here is it's like a spiritual journey and, it, and it's today it works. And I really feel it works. You know what I mean? I'm sitting here asking myself, not no mask on, mask off. This is Willie Jefferson. You know what I mean? Blessed to be under the king and the church today. Well God said. Bless. Everybody have a blessed night. You too. Peace and love all.